On this episode, we're delving into something a little more obscure because I wanted to cover the Slit Mouthed Woman series. Although, the weird thing is, uh, it, it's kind of hard to tell what is and what isn't a part of this series. Uh, these are some J horror films, and it seems as if some are connected and some aren't. So, in order to cover all of the bases, I'm just going to talk about a bunch. This starts back in 2007 with Kuchisaki Anna, or as it was known here in the United States, carved the slit mouthed woman. But I guess also just the slit mouthed woman? The beginning has the story of a boy who saw the slit mouthed woman, an urban legend, and he saw a woman with her face covered with a mask. And she asks, Am I pretty? And then removed the mask to show that the corners of her mouth were sliced up to her ears. In the legend, if you say no, she kills you. And if you say yes, then she wants to make you look as good as her and slices your face as well. There's a new teacher at the school, Kyoko, and the town is struck by an earthquake, which seems to release a spirit from a closet. It's carrying scissors and is wearing a white mask and keeps saying, am I pretty? And shortly after, a young boy is taken. Because of the abduction, they adjourn school and warn the kids to be on the lookout as they believe it's someone pretending to be the slit-mouthed woman. And little Mika is ridiculed for wearing a mask as if she's the ghost, although she wears it to cover abuse. They have an encounter with the woman on the streets, revealing her carved face, and Mika is taken. Kyoko has a troubled relationship with her own daughter as she's divorced and doesn't have custody and this newspaper says that Mika went missing in April of 2006, so that appears to be our year on this one. Another teacher, Naboro, keeps hearing the voice saying, Am I pretty? and they follow it to a house where they find Kushisakiana and kills her, but right after she transforms back into a regular woman and she has a driver's license that expires in 2019 and they determine that the spirit's name is Teiko Matsuzaki, and she's Noboro's mother. She, she was abusive to them as children and killed his siblings, but then disappeared. Shortly after, reports of the slit mouth woman started happening and she can possess women, and it's signified by them developing a bad cough, like Teiko had. She takes another girl and takes her back and Mika is there. She slices the mouth of the girl and then kills that boy from earlier. They manage to find out where the spirit is hiding out, which is also Naboro's childhood home. And he remembers his mother trying to kill him. And he instinctively struck back, slicing open her mouth and then killing her. He then covered the body in a coat and mask and hid it. And they find Mika there, but before they can rescue her, Kuchisakiana appears. She captures them, but Mika's mother arrives, but is also stabbed. And when Kyoko seemingly kills Ko, she just jumps into Mika's mom instead. She stabs Naburo, but he realizes that to stop her, he must cut off her head, which he does. But nope, doesn't work. Instead, she takes over Kyoko while she's with her daughter, and the film ends. That was followed one year later with a sequel. Kuchisakiana 2, otherwise known as The Scissors Massacre from 2008. The opening is very kind and tells us that it's based on actual events from 1978, so it looks like we're in prequel territory here, and it's in March. This has Mayumi here on the track team, and she lives on a chicken farm with her two sisters and parents. The oldest sister of the three, Sachiko, is getting married, but has a jilted ex that's stalking her, and Mayumi is finding a little love of her own. That night, she decides to sleep in Sachiko's bed as she's out of town, but Suzuki arrives and mistakes her for her sister and pours acid on her face. He kills their mom before he's shot by the dad, and afterwards, the town is spreading elaborate rumors about what happened. Unfortunately, Mayumi is horribly scarred, and she takes to wearing a mask to school and is made fun of by the other girls, leading to violent outbursts. Soon after though, her father commits suicide and Mayumi starts seeing a woman standing nearby while wearing a red coat. Next, her friends start to shun her and her long distance boyfriend ignores her letters. After she sees the woman in red more, her friends are killed by someone with a pair of scissors. And after she meets with Seiji, who tells her that they were never truly dating, he is also killed. 
Middle sister Yuki starts to get suspicious of Mayumi and finds a bloody dress in her room, although she finds out and brings the scissors. But Yuki has already poisoned her drink. They bury her in the woods, but that doesn't stick since she shows back up with scissored hands and starts a chopping. She kills Yuki and then heads home to face off against Sachiko, and after a short chase, the big sister is stabbed full of holes. As she dies, Mayumi says the line, and then she goes after a young boy, and the rumors and stories begin to spread. The ending tells us that in 1978, a serial murderer killed 13 people and injured 52, and Mayumi was a suspect but was never caught. Now, there's really no link to the first movie outside of the general concept, although it's possible that whatever spirit possessed Mayumi is the same that eventually went into Taiko, or it's a third entity controlling them both. That series continued the same year with Kuchisaki Ana Zero, The Beginning, also from 2008, and this young woman is at the police station being asked about her sister, who had her face burned in an accident when they were younger, and she's hearing voices and it flashes back a few days, and Misato had plastic surgery to help fix her burns, although she still sees it as damaged. Her sister tries to convince her otherwise, but she keeps saying that the operation failed and encounters a dead body and a ghostly form in the woods. The ambulance drivers also meet up with the woman in the coat who says, Am I pretty? Uh, the sisters are met with scorn as someone paints monster go die on their door, and we find out that the ambulance folk are dead in the woods, and Mizato is missing. Her sister reads about the legend of the Kuchisakiana and how it formed ages ago, and that the legend began in the mountains during the Showa era, which was between 1926 to 1989. But if you think they're talking about part two, they said that the legend began with a woman in a bus accident who was cut from ear to ear. Misato returns, unsure of where she was, and a psychic says that she's dead, and it's the undead in the house. This guy tells the story of his wife and how she believed that she was a slip mouth woman and it was 30 years ago and I guess her name was Sachiko and I think it's meant to be Sachiko from part two but her story is slightly altered. And okay, but then this guy's the husband, like it matches up with the 30 year thing if this is meant to be 2008 with that film being 1978. So it's pretty possible even if the details don't match, I don't know. The psychic ends up dead, and the woman shows up here and there, but very slowly, and showing off some Sadako eyeball, I guess. And there's a journal that states that there were experiments around spreading rumors of the Kuchisaki Ana, and they had a woman dress up as her in order to try to test their theory. And that was Sachiko, and it's definitely a different character, so this is clearly, again, not connected to either of the previous stories. But it does create the element that it's the fear of the slit mouth woman that creates her in the first place. The doc kills and buries her, and back in the present, Misato is finally completely taken over and kills him, and asks if she's pretty before killing her sister, revealing her sliced face. A final scene shows the two sisters together one last time, and there's no date here, and that 30 year thing doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna roll with it and put this in real time 2008. So this is where it's confusing because from here on in, it's hard to tell what's connected and what's not, but, and, and let's face it, that trilogy isn't connected anyway. So I figured I'd feature a few other entries I found that aren't a part of that series, but feature the character. And the first is actually a face off from 2011, and it's Hikiko-san versus Kuchisakiana. Now, Hikiko-san is another Japanese urban legend and is faced off with several other villains, including Sadako from The Ring. And I could not find a version of this with subtitles, so I'm gonna do my best to figure out what happens here. So, there's these two little girls, and they're at the hospital in a coma, and one night a nurse is doing her rounds and feeds something in a cage, and it's human parts. And based on the weapon of choice and the mouth, it's Kuchisakiana, prisoner at a hospital for some reason. After being there for 10 years, the girls awaken, but it's clear that they're haunted by their experience and have memories about being attacked. Later, Hikiko-san is showing up to attack, but she's invisible to most, 
and eventually the slit mouth woman escapes her cage and does what she do and the two spirits do finally fight a bit and Akiko seems to win and I don't see a date here so I guess real time 2011 works. This next one is interesting because it actually predates the first Carved movie, but it's not the first Kuchisaki Anna film, and it's 2005's A Slit-Mouthed Woman. And we begin at a hospital once again as a doctor and a nurse get it on. And it goes on for a while, and yeah, it's basically a softcore scene. And they're attacked by the standard dark hair over the face entity. And there's a magazine with the year 2004 on it, and it's meant to be the current issue, so that looks to be our year here. And a reporter is sent to investigate the legend of the title character, and the rumors surround that hospital from the beginning, and they say it closed three years ago. And then they recap her legend about the whole am I pretty thing. And then there's a another sex scene. There's another attack, again while a couple is doing the deed, and in an interview with a former patient, of the hospital talks about a secret chamber where the slip mouth woman would escape from and get some information like that her father was supposed to be a politician of some sort. She's able to track him down and we learn about a girl named Hitomi who wanted plastic surgery even though her dad disapproved and she drove her car into a steel beam which mangled her face. They attempted to restore her but it left a scar on her mouth and she killed herself. Eventually, after some more sex scenes, the reporter confronts Hitomi at the hospital and at first appears to leave her go and move on, but then it's clear that she's simply taking her over. This next one is from 2012, and it's Kuchisaki Anna Returns, which sounds like it should be a sequel to something, but it isn't. It's a standalone movie. And it has four girls going to a small village as a part of a study group to learn about local legends. They're staying at a lodge with an odd guy running it and meet a woman who is wearing lipstick to represent the old slit mouth. But then Ari stumbles upon a secret meeting within the town discussing their festival and she's forced to run when they spot her. During her fleeing, she discovers a woman bound in chains and is captured. The next day, while looking for her, another of the girls stumble upon the woman and removes her mask and discovers a huge set of teeth that chomp her. The woman gets loose and starts killing anyone in her path, but some dude in a CW level superhero costume recaptures her. Eri is told that woman is a god who has been living in the village for thousands of years, and the girls are meant to be sacrifices to her in order for the town to continue in prosperity. She teams up with a fed up villager to stop it, but they're thwarted and the ceremony goes on with Ari alone, but she flashbangs the place and the woman gets loose chomping on the villagers. One of the girls loses an arm and Ari stabs the woman, but then the cult leader cuts her. So yeah, I guess everyone dies, but then the spirit of the Kuchisaki lives on partially in Ari, but also in another of the girls and she kills that one. The last one we're going to cover is a jump across the pond with 2014's Slit Mouth Woman in LA and Claire has a dream of the KO and her roommate tells her that it's a Japanese urban legend that she's studied and another friend says that there's a way to stop her and that's to say that she's average and she'll let you go. She also says that there's three of them and she has two sisters but Claire also has a sister that she's never met. Then that friend is mysteriously killed. A professor says that there's an increase of rumors of the Japanese legends which seems to have an effect on making them real. And then it branches at the stories of those other legends. And one is Kokori-san. And there's a couple of waitresses. And one is stabbed to death right outside of their work. And when another friend turns up dead, it turns out that the Ouija version of Kokori-san, a fox spirit, is taking vengeance on them. But it's also a form of their friend Kate attacking everyone through the Kokori-san and they're able to break the curse, but only by betraying her. Meanwhile, Claire sees that sightings of the slit wealth woman are increasing and has another dream. We then see another story with a couple of street thugs killing a guy, but then some, some dude comes along and reanimates his corpse and we're told that it's the story of Furin the evil hunter. Uh, and then they're on Hollywood Boulevard and there's a Hobbit movie playing, but I, I can't see which one, but that, that makes it either 2012 13 or 14 
And there's this guy looking for the slit mouth woman on the streets and encountering zombies. And Furin fights the evil priest guy and has to fight, I guess, Satan? There's then another story of a guy broke down on the side of the road, helped out by this dude, and he gets asked back to his place for dinner. He has a sister named Umeko who is shy and awkward and attacks him, but he escapes. Later at his house, they follow him there and try to break up his relationship, and the brother uses a voodoo doll, so Furin shows up to help out, fighting back, which kills Umeko's brother. And she then encounters the slipmouth woman, who gives her scissors to scar her own face, and then she comes out to attack and kill the couple. That leaves us with our final segment, the wraparound, as we go back to Claire, but it looks like her roommate has killed her, but she's now returned as a Kuchisaki Anna. But Sarah then slices her own face, and, and we see the murder, but then she goes back to see herself kill her friend in the beginning, and then be a really goofy digital effect. Then. During the end credits, I can see a billboard for Frozen in a reflection, so it's 2013 then. So there you have it. Quite a few movies all about the Kuchisaki Anna, otherwise known as the Slit Mouth Woman. And yeah, um, these were pretty enjoyable. It's kind of a weird timeline. Obviously, it's not truly a timeline because none of these films are connected to each other. So they can all be watched individually, one at a time, or... Uh, you know, not at all, I guess, if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, I, I got a kick out of most of them. Uh, a couple of them were kind of dumb, uh, not that great, but for the most part, none of them were hard to watch or terrible movies. But let me know if you've seen any of them. Let me know if this is a urban legend that interests you. Tell me down below in the comments. I'd like to hear that. Um, also, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and hit the subscribe button if you like what you see on the channel. And also, if you think about it, go to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash movie timelines. I appreciate that. You can help support this channel like these guys do. That's pretty awesome. And otherwise, keep on coming back and watching, and we'll see you very shortly for another great video. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.